Welcome back. It is a big day in the UK. A new prime minister, Boris Johnson, is out. Liz Truss is in. But that begs the question, who is Liz Truss? Let's talk about it right now. Abby Amincona is a political commentator with Young Voices UK. He's up late with me tonight here on The Final Five. So, Albie, go ahead and answer the question. Who is Liz Truss? That's a very good question. She's not a very she's not a very famous figure on in Britain or indeed in America. She is the former foreign secretary. She is one of the longest serving cabinet ministers. I think she served under four, three or four prime ministers, first under David Cameron in 2014, then under Theresa May, then under Boris Johnson. And now, of course, she is the prime minister. She did a very good job in the Department for International Trade, signing trade deals across the world, a couple of new ones notably in Australia. Um, and now she has become the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, the, the country's third female Prime Minister. She's not always been a Conservative, actually. She went to go meet the Queen today in Balmoral, but when she was at university, she was part of the Liberal Democrat Party and she campaigned to abolish the monarchy. So she's come on a political journey, but now she is the British Prime Minister. How, how much... I imagine that as far as we know, did not come up in the conversation with, with the Queen today. I would imagine not, but of course the conversations between Her Majesty the Queen and her Prime Minister are strictly private, but I would be surprised if it came up in conversation. I think Her Majesty is far too polite to bring up the, the political views that people had when they were at university. Everyone's been on a journey since then. No, no doubt. Uh, we know that uh, when, when Boris Johnson was prime minister, uh, he had a, a, a certain a special, I guess, for lack of a better word, relationship with former President Trump. Uh, it seemed that he got along well with, with President Biden right now. Do we see any, any change in how she approaches the relationship between the UK and the United States? I think the, the, the relationship between the United States of America and the United Kingdom has always been a special relationship. I think the latest that I had heard is that she'd actually delayed some of her announcing some of her cabinet appointments because she was on the phone to President Biden. I think she will work well with whoever is in power at the White House and whether or not that is a Republican or whether or not that is someone from the Democratic Party. Liz Truss is someone who likes to get things done uh, and she was a former foreign secretary and she understands in international affairs. Back to Boris Johnson, somebody who uh, even before when he was mayor of London, before he became prime minister, when he served in various roles in the government, uh, he was, shall we say, a colorful figure. We knew who Boris Johnson was uh, before he was prime minister. Uh, is, you know, I'm looking at it from our prism here in the U.S. Uh, you mentioned the, the work that Liz Truss has done in the government in the U.K. Was she always sort of a under the radar type figure or or were there things about her that that you you knew in the UK that maybe we didn't know so much in the US well, first of all, she's a much less colourful figure than Boris Johnson, and she's definitely someone that has really probably kept her head low throughout the years that she's been in the Cabinet since 2014. She's not really been involved in any controversy. She's seen as someone who was quite diligent, that just quietly gets on with the job, and really her profile raised massively when she was appointed as the Minister, as a, as a Secretary of State, rather, for international trade. And that is when we started to see her really start soaring in Conservative Party polls, notably on the Conservative blog called Conservative Home. Following that, she was appointed the Foreign Secretary, one of the four great offices of state in the United Kingdom. And then, you know, her star really began to shine. She managed to free Nazanin Zaghari Ratcliffe from Iran when she was held a prisoner there by the Iranian government. That was a massive coup for the Foreign Secretary. And also, she had a very tough stance against President Putin uh, with the whole Russia and Ukraine conflict. So she she is has been in the party and been around for a long time, but it's only recently that her star has really started to shine. It appears that she uh, she will soon uh, possibly travel to Ukraine, uh, since you mentioned that Fox News was reporting that, as we saw just a, a little while ago here. I, I guess my, my last question would be, in, in the UK right now, it is a parliamentary system uh, where we know Boris Johnson assumed office, then eventually faced the voters in which he maintained his hold on the leadership of, of the party. Uh, how long do we believe it'll be before Liz Truss faces the voters when we see another parliamentary election in the UK, or is that yet to be determined? 
I think most expectations are that the next general election will be in May 2024. It could be as late as Q4 2024, but I think it's quite unlikely that a prime minister would call, call an election again so close to Christmas without you know, really needing to do that. So I would imagine it would be in May 2024. There is a, 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 pr a pretty substantial story that maybe has gone uncovered here in, in the U.S., but but when it comes to, to cost of living, uh, that is something that Boris Johnson leaves office, where the cost of living and the cost of items in the U.K., I mean, we're seeing it here with inflation in the U.S., but but you're seeing it, too, in the U.K. right now. Absolutely. I think the inflation actually in Europe and particularly in the United Kingdom is worse than in the US. We are particularly exposed here to the international wholesale price of gas because we are a net energy importer, not a net energy out, uh, exporter, rather like the United States of America. So that really ha is having quite a devastating effect on consumer wallets and also the broader economy. I think there are some expectations from some top banks that say inflation could reach 22% next year. So she's got a very, very very busy in train, a lot of a lot of things to get on with and sort out in the country. We talk about here pocketbook issues being top of mind for voters as we go into a midterm elections. It'll be fascinating to see how it translates in the UK. Albie, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate the insight from the UK. Thank you. And the final five is back right after this.